man. Welcome back to Herb's class, five minute math. <laughs> Whoa, is this school? Because I do not want to be at school. Get out. <laughs> Sorry about that. You know, Sophia, man, she's just popping in any time. Anyway, welcome back to Herb's class, man. Five more minutes of math. Today we're talking binomial distribution, which has a lot to do with probability. You'll hear those words frequently jam together. <laughs> binomial probability, binomial distribution probability, it all goes together, right? We're gonna talk about all of that today. So to get this whole conversation started, it all starts back with our coin toss, our tree diagram with the coin toss. Remember that? Yeah, that's the one. So remember when you flip a coin, there are two outcomes, right? Heads or tails. And the, their probability is equal. Two outcomes, heads or tails. Now, what if I flip that same coin twice? All right. So, depending on the first outcome, if I got heads first, you know, my second coin toss will give me heads or tails. And then if I flip tails first, my second coin toss could either give me heads or tails. So, this is two coin tosses, and we start to produce outcomes, right? So, let's talk about those outcomes. Bang! So, there go the outcomes. In two coin tosses, there are four different outcomes. If we're keeping track of heads and tails, there are four different outcomes. Two heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. Now, remember, we multiply these probabilities along the way to get our final probability of that outcome, and we can do some simple math to figure out how many of these outcomes have two heads, or how many of these outcomes have one of each. And if we were to add in one more coin toss, bang, three coin tosses. Now, if I toss the same coin three times, these are all of the outcomes. These are all the ways that that could pan out. Three heads, two heads and a tail, heads, tail, heads. And then we could do some pretty simple math to figure out how many of these um, obey a certain criteria or how many of these fit a certain description. How many of these outcomes have two tails? How many of these outcomes have three heads? So this is pretty simple math that we can do with simple multiplication down each path and simple addition to add up the outcomes that we're looking for. Now, what if I wanted to know about 10 coin tosses? Yikes, no. 10? 10 coin tosses? This is only three. You want me to fit 10? I can't even fit 10 on my board. What would that even look like? <laughs> yeah, right. That's some scribble, and that would only be five coin tosses. <sighs> you know what I say. If it don't fit on the board, there must be a formula for it. <laughs> of course there's a formula for it. But before I show you the formula, there are a couple of rules. Yeah, always some rules in math. Let's talk about the rules. There are only certain situations where you can use a formula I'm about to show you. Let's talk about the rules now. Rules. Rule number one. Rule number one is each trial, each time you do the thing, each time you flip a coin, each time you have a baby, each time you shoot a free throw, each time you pick a menu item, there can only be two outcomes, either pass or fail. Successes and failures. And we're gonna talk more about those later, but for each trial, each time you do the thing, whatever that thing happens to be, there's gotta be a way to succeed at that thing and a way not to succeed. All right, nice. Rule number two, every time you do the thing, it has to be the same probability of success each time. It's gotta be the same odds each time. Every time I flip that coin, I had a 50-50 chance it was gonna come up heads or tails. Every time I have a baby, there's a 50-50 chance it's going to be a boy or a girl. Now, it doesn't have to be 50-50. It just has to be the same odds every time. Like picking a card out of a deck, right? If I take a card out of a deck, there's a 1 out of 52 chance I'll get at whatever particular card I'm looking for. Now, if I put that card back, next time I pick it, I'm going to have the same odds. So be careful and look for words like replacement and without replacement because if you're eating M&Ms, yeah, the odds are going to be different from the pile because the pile is going to be one m M&M short because you made it. Be very, very careful about same odds each time. Has to have the same odds each time. All right. Last rule. Last rule, limited number of trials. We can't be flipping these coins forever, right? 
And you can flip the coin a thousand times, you can flip the coin 10,000 times, but there has to be a limited number of times that you're flipping that coin. Because how can I count the number of successes unless I know the number of times I'm going to flip or the number of times I'm going to do the thing, all right? So these are the rules. If your situation follows these rules, we're going to use this formula. This is it. Yes, this is the formula that's going to give you the probability of the capabilities of whatever you're looking for. So let's break down the parts of this formula real quick, just so we understand how these parts work. First part, bang. Okay, so the first part of this formula is um, a relatively advanced math term. Hopefully you're, you've seen this before, and if not, there's a video about this too. But this is called n choose k. It's used a lot in combinations and permutations. And what it is, is it gives you the number of possible outcomes in any situation. So let's say I flip a coin 10 times. And I want to know out of that 10, out of those 10 flips, how many combinations are there where six heads come up? Heads is success in this case. 10 choose six would give me the amount of outcomes where there are six heads out of those 10 flips. So this is the formula. You know what factorial means. If it's 10 factorial, it's 10 times nine times eight times seven times six, all the way down to one. This is the formula for that. This has its own formula here. Exactly right. Now the top number in your choose is going to be the number of trials. How many times you're doing the thing? How many times I'm flipping the coin? The bottom number in your choose is how many successes? If I label heads as success and I want to know how many combinations there are where there are six heads or there are three heads out of those 10 flips, I would do this choose function. Yeah, exactly right. So that's the beginning. This P, yeah, both of those P's actually, that lowercase P is the probability of success on each trial. Every time you do the thing, what's the probability of success? So if I'm flipping a coin and my success is heads, that P would be 0.5 or one half because there's a 50% chance or one out of two odds that I'm going to get ahead every time I flip. And remember, that's got to be the same each time. And it doesn't have to be 0.5. Let's say I'm shooting free throws and I'm a 70% free throw shooter. My chance of success on every free throw is 70% because that's what my percentage is. Yes. Now, notice here in the parentheses, it says one minus P. So when I take all of that together, that could be the probability of failure. Yeah, because the probability of success, when you add it to the probability of failure, it's got to add up to one. Yeah, exactly right. And these K's and these N's are the same numbers as you're using here. Yeah, so that's the formula. Now, as you can see, there's some complicated math just within this formula itself. So, you know, we got calculator tricks for this stuff. Yeah, of course you could do this on a calculator. It's got to be a sweet calculator, a TI or a Casio. But I got videos to show you how to do that, too. We're going to do a couple of practice problems, man. Remember, this means nothing without no practice. We got to practice. So check out the calculator video on how to enter this stuff into the calculator to save yourself some headaches. And then check out the practice video. Yeah, buddy. I'll see you there. Bye, guys.